Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, I broke up with my girlfriend primarily because she's a bit overweight and I'm not attracted to her when she's naked. However, she is active, teaches yoga, and eats healthy. After we broke up, she stepped up her workout intensity seemingly to lose more weight. She has lost more and more weight the past year uh, than we, uh, as we've known each other. She's a good woman, and I could see myself marrying and having kids with her. But I know I would resent her if I wasn't attracted to her when she is naked. So I decided to break up with her, and we've been arguing some. That was about three weeks ago. Through breaking up, fasting, and some of your t well timed videos, I returned to the Catholic faith. This week, I grew closer to God through my guardian angel. My ex and I have started talking a bit more and hanging out, generally cook dinner. We started saying we love each other again. Aww. She did go to church with me last week. She's a Christian. If I get married, I want my wife to be Catholic. Plus, waiting till marriage for sex. We did have sex once. Uh, was almost to, able to do it Carezza style. Almost. <laughs> I mentioned to her after mass about her becoming Catholic and I would go to the classes with her. She's not gung-ho on the idea. Long story short, should I basically say I want to date you again, but if you're willing, but if you're not willing to become Catholic, then there's no point in dating, right? Or should I start dating again and see if she comes around in the next couple months? Okay, so the very first thing I want to address is her, you know, being a little overweight, you said. You said a bit overweight and not being attracted to her when she's naked. And then it sounds like she lost some weight and um and now you're and now you're dating again. Uh, I just got to throw this out there, man. And I'm a little bit weird in this way. And I, I don't know if other people can shift their brain like this. But you decide to make her attractive in your mind. You understand that, right? Like you can look at, the, at even her flaws, even if she's a little fluffy, and learn to love that. I don't know why this sounds so strange because even coming out of my mouth sounds weird because it's like, oh, you're either attracted or you're not. But I think we have more conscious ability over that. I think we can be more conscious about changing our taste. And look, by the sounds of it, you say she's worth marrying and having children with her. The one thing with regard to looks is you got to be able to deal with children that might look like her. If you could say my, if my child looks like her, I'm okay, then cool. But beyond that, you decide that she's attractive. It, you make it up. You decide that that's good enough for you, right? And it doesn't mean that you're. It doesn't mean that you're lowering your standards. In fact, you have higher standards because you're looking at the things that are more important, right? Like her ability to be a wife. You say she would make a good wife and a good mother. That listen, looks fade too. Looks fade and they change. You saw what happened. She was fat. Now she's lean. Looks change. And for women, you got to just accept it that the woman you marry ain't going to be a woman that you with 20 years from now. They weather. <laughs> they weather faster than us, right? They say women age like milk, right? Um, and you got to be able to, well, first of all, know that because it fades, it's ephemeral, it's not that important. What doesn't fade, what actually grows in value is her ability to be a good wife and a good mother and then a good grandmother, a good woman, right? And we talk about the attributes of a good woman here all the time and I know a lot of you guys recognize it. You know, you, you can see what's a good woman and what's not a good woman. So, you know, I'm, I don't want to put it bluntly. I don't want to throw this out there, you know, flippantly, let me say this. Um, to kind of get over her looks because it's, it's not the point. Make her beautiful in your eyes. I will share this one uh, because I've been sharing a lot about my relationship lately. Share this one about my wife, especially when, you know, when we were younger and even now. I'll tell you two things. Number one, when she was young, she had crooked teeth. I met this girl with crooked teeth. All the other, all the other girls had straight teeth. I, I decided that those crooked teeth were beautiful. 
I used to kiss her teeth. I would say, show me your teeth. Well, I kiss her teeth. Does that mean I have like a, 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 a crooked tooth fetish or something? Well, I did for her because I liked her so much that her quirks became beautiful. Isn't, isn't that a strange thing? I don't, I don't know if you guys have ever experienced this, but when you love someone, their weird shit turns you on, at least for me. Like the more quirky, the little bit, the little weird things are the things that I'm like, oh, you know, who's, you know, who talks about this. Uh, Frank Yang talks about this in one of his videos. If you guys remember who Frank Yang is, um, but like the, her weird little, like now she's gotten older and she changes. Women change. She gotten older, and her look. My mother, my, my wife, uh, was a little Freudian slip. My wife uh, gave birth to all four of my children naturally. And she breastfed all of them, right? All my children were breastfed by their mother. Her boobs don't look like they used to. They used to be big and plump. I look at pictures sometimes, I'm like, whoa, I forgot you had boobs like that. She got small boobs now. They're small deflated blue. She's a lot leaner than she was back then. She got small deflated boobs. You know what I love? I love small deflated boobs. Oh man, I love her small deflated boobs. They're just, they're small and flat and empty. And I could just suck on them. And it's right in my mouth it's beautiful it's amazing it's great it's not what she used to have but i learned to fall in love with her at each step of the way your woman the same thing man she's gonna she's not you gotta decide that she's attractive right you make her attractive so that's number one number two with uh you know you growing close to god and you know her and you know you're wanting her to be catholic um this is your path religion is a is a religion is a unique thing in that it's personal it's communal but it's, it's but it's personal first you just getting started on your path you just walking with her you just walking this path yourself now it's brand new to you and you and look she's willing to go to mass with you that's a win you're walking this path and she's walking along with you. Women aren't really as attracted to religion as men are because men have this sense of purpose and legacy in life. Well, women, it's a little bit different. It's the men that want, that usually want religion. Uh, so with regard to your wife, the fact that she's just walking with you on your path is good enough. She's not if she's not turning you away from your path, your walk, then that's good enough. If Even if she's willing to go with you, maybe she don't have to become Catholic, maybe not right away. But if she's willing to go with you, she's willing to pray with you, you're better than me. My wife don't go to mass with me. I go to mass by myself. But I pray with her and I pray with the kids every day. We pray the rosary, right? We pray together. We read the Bible together. We, I do a catechism study with them together. But I haven't taken my family to mass. Cause we're not ready for that yet. I'm a new Catholic. I'm doing it myself. I haven't even found the right right church for me. I'm still searching. I'm out there, right? When I find the right situation, when the time is right, I can invite them. I already talked to them about my vision of that. Well, we're all gonna go, but I know it can't happen like that because I didn't raise my kids Catholic. And my wife, she, oh, I came out of nowhere with this Catholic. You know, she knows me well enough that I'll, you know, I come out of nowhere with all kinds of stuff. But she, I can't expect her to just hop on. Right. She does that sometimes, but I can't expect it every single time, especially when I've been wrong sometimes. Right. I got to honor her rationale. Right. She got to walk her own path too. pray for her. I pray for the conversion of my family. You could pray for the conversion of your family, but you can't make her. <laughs> right. You can't make her. Now, if you want to get married. Right. You say you're waiting for marriage for sex. Well, then that may be the time that you pose to her that I would like to be married in the, in the Catholic church. I would like to receive the sacrament of what do they call it matrimony, right? Because there's a whole new, there's a whole different perspective on marriage. There's a whole, there are different graces available to marriage in the Catholic church. It's just not available in, you know, your, your back bar in church, right? <laughs> right. There's, there are graces associated with it. There's ritual associated with it. There's tremendous meaning associated with it. You, you see, even the Pope won't budge on what marriage is recently. You know, they're trying to make him like ordain 
gay marriage like the other churches, you know, back barn churches do. Um, but no matter how apostate the Pope is, you know, he makes all kinds of egregious choices and, and decisions that I don't understand. He don't mess with the sacraments. You can't mess with the sacraments. You can't mess with marriage because it's it was established to be this way, right? And so you might want to, I wasn't married in a Catholic church. I'm just describing to you that if you're, I wasn't on a Catholic pact when I got married. I'm describing to you the benefit of using that as a lever, get some leverage, and explain to her why you want to have a Catholic marriage. And then, of course, when you have children, it'll be important because um, you know you 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 don't want a divided family. You don't want a divided family. You don't want one person believing one way and another person believing another way. Um, it's better when everybody believes the same way, or at least puts on. You know, in other words, goes along with. So that we we could be cohesive, right? And it, you it should be her going along with you, not you going along with her, right? Because remember, you're the head, you're the leader, you're the authority, you have the responsibility, you're the man. And so help that helps, dude. Um, I know you say uh, you want to know if you should date her again. I think so. She sounds like a good girl. I would date her again, uh, with the intention of getting married. And so that means you got to walk your Catholic path and you got to enroll her. Like I spoke to the guy earlier about enrolling, you enroll her. You got to give her good reason. You got to explain to her why, right? Guarantee. I don't, I wouldn't imagine that she's like, uh, you know, really deep into apologetics and she's, and she's going to refute everything you say. But if she does have questions about the faith, then you do your research and you share with her. There's a, there's a really good Kindle book called um i wish i could remember the name of it radio responses it's called radio responses to catholic questions and they give you know because a lot of uh protestants they don't understand they think you know they, they have all kinds of misconceptions about the catholic faith and she might too too so then you you have to be there to be a to answer her you got to be there to help her help her see help her understand right but you can't expect her to just drop everything and you know run with you you got you to enroll. Um, so should you start dating her again? Yeah, I think so. I would like to see it work for y'all. She sounds like a nice girl. I know you're a good guy. Uh, should I start dating again and see if she comes around in the next couple of months? Yeah, do it. Go for it, man. I think it'll be good. Keep me posted. Let me know how it unfolds for you, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students, where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. And we talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, and you wanna join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.